Hi, my name is Philip Gardner, and I'm going to talk a little bit now about some of the stuff I've been working on in capturing JW Player video data using JavaScript and XAPI. So let's say you're an institution or an organization that has online courses, and within those online courses are videos. You want to find out how users are interacting with those videos. Maybe they're skipping through certain parts of videos, or maybe they're not even completing them in the first place. So why do we want this data? Well, for a lot of reasons. If you know this data, you can really improve the quality of your videos. Say people are skipping through a certain part almost every time. That probably means that section of the video is very boring. Maybe people aren't even completing certain videos. Maybe it's too long, and that's why no one wants to watch you through the whole thing. And you can also compare the completion rate with the actual scores on the exam to see if watching the video really does help you get a better grade on the final exam. And lastly, if you can aggregate this data into a very nice report, it'll look really nice and you'll impress a lot of people. You'll have them just as excited as Mr. Data is over here. So how do we do all this? We do this through a very new thing called XAPI. XAPI is an online web service that will pull data from learning management systems like courses in the form of JavaScript statements and sends them to an online database. And what do these statements look like? Well, one of the most important things in the statements is the verbs. As my boss says, it's all about the verbs, man. What kind of verbs would we be talking about when we're referring to a video? Well, verbs like paused, played, skipped, that sort of thing. So I basically have two main goals. One, I want to actually obtain useful user data. And two, if I can obtain it, I want to report it. And I want to make it user friendly so that you don't have to have a four year computer science degree to actually understand what's going on with the videos. So I'm going to go over here to this. This is an online HTML document I made with an embedded video in it just to do test runs. I have it prompted to ask for my name. So here's the video file that I made. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the error console. All I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video and I'm going to pause it. And this gives me two reports in the console log. It shows me that the video was played and there was a video sta or a play statement submitted and that it was paused and where it was paused. Well, two questions. How did I get that data? And where is that statement being submitted and what does that look like? Well, I'm going to answer first how I got that data. I got this data by using the JW player commands. JW player commands, there's tons of them. You can go on their website and get them. Um, these commands are programmed to, on an event, send this statement. So what event? Well, it's the on pause function, which means that every time a user pauses a video, it sends this information to the online database. And I have it programmed for multiple events uh, on play, on seek, a bunch of things. And you can really customize it to do whatever, to get whatever data you want. And two, right here, this is where I'm sending it. Where are those statements being submitted? This address. Well, let's go there and see what that looks like. This is that address. Yikes, yeah, this is, there is probably useful data in here, but no one would ever be able to find anything useful in here because it's not aggregated or queried at all. So, now time to pull data from these statements and report them. So this is the graph I made. This shows the verb popularity over the last 30 days. These are all the verbs that have been submitted for the last 30 days when it comes to that video. And I want to see more specifically about one verb. So I click on pause. This shows me over here as a table of who submitted that verb, how many times they did it, and on what object the Big Buck Bunny video. Down here, down here it shows the video. Um, I only have one object, Big Buck Bunny video. If you were, uh, if it was a course that had multiple videos, you would see all those videos here and how many times pause was used on each one of those videos. So what does that look in the code? Let's go under the trunk a little bit. Um, go down, I'm gonna go down to my first graph. Right here, this is this graph. So if you see, the variable is verb chart. And I have it container stuff for all the, the C CSS. Um, I have it in descending order. 
and I've customized it to show certain things on the labels. Uh, so again, a lot of this code's online. It's really nice. Um, but more specifically, how did I get these graphs to be interactive? How did I get these graphs to change whenever I hit a certain verb? Well, this is right here. This is the parent graph. If we go down to the very bottom, uh, this is where I actually draw that first graph that we just looked at. What I did was, uh, XCP has a very cool thing where if you use the dashboard, you can put other graphs as children graphs of the parent graph. So I have these three, these two charts and this table all as children of the main graph. So this is the parent graph right here. These three are its children charts and graphs. So all of this is 100% interactive. You can query for any data you want just by the click of a button. And it all comes out in these nice graphs and tables. So I just have one more thing to show you, these two other graphs that I made. Uh, this is a line graph of just basically the overall traffic. Uh, you can, you would make uh, one of these graphs for a certain video. Uh, this shows how many verbs are being submitted in that video, how many people are interacting with it basically. It shows the date. Uh, so on July 31st, I interacted with it with 113 verbs. That's just good metadata to have to see how many people are watching and interacting with your videos. And down here, uh, sort of the same thing, you can just see who's interacting with your videos, what users are interacting with your videos. Maybe one of these users completed a class, yet they hardly interacted with videos. Uh, that's very much useful data to have. So these are all my graphs, and uh, so far I think that's all I have to show off. Uh, thank you very much for watching. This was how I captured JW Player video data using JavaScript and XAPI. Thanks very much for watching.